Hello everyone, and welcome to The Mortuary. I am The Mortician, and today I have a recent album pickups. Um, before I get into this, I'd like to apologize for the fan noise in the background. Once again, it's pretty hot in here. So yeah, let's get this started. First thing we have here um, is Monster Magnet's Power Trip. Um, if you haven't listened to Monster Magnet, they're kind of like a stone or rock group. Um, and it's absolutely awesome. I really, really like this album. It's such a refreshing change from the stuff that I normally listen to. Um, it, 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 it has some pretty heavy guitars at certain points, but I think my favorite songs are the ones that feature more acoustical stuff. Like, for example, Space Lord has a nice acoustical, groovy, acoustical riff going on. And then it breaks into the heavier, you know, um, electric guitar, distorted electric guitar riff. Um, really great album. I dig the vocals. The production is actually really awesome. And just in general, I, I, I find I enjoy this album quite a lot. Um, I would have never picked this up if it weren't for my friend, though, because he actually has this album and played it quite a lot while we were walking around. Um, great album. I think I picked this up for like six bucks. It was really, really cheap. Maybe five. It was really cheap. Next, we have Death Grips. The Money Store. Um, this is the first Death Grips album I ever bought, and this is the only one I have so far. But if you haven't heard of, about Death Grips, I mean, who has not at this point? They've been in numerous memes and whatnot. Um, but Death Grips is an experimental hip hop. I don't know if it, it's a duo, I think it is a duo. Um, and it's absolutely fucking awesome. The beats on Death Grips really, I think, are my favorite part. Um, they're just. I listen to, I, 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 I've kind of been around the gamut of rap, and there's just nothing that sounds like them. Um, from MC Ride's voice, I think that's the least of your name, um, to just the beats that are produced, there's like nothing else like it. And I just adore this album, and I'm glad I picked this up. Um, but when I was picking this up, I was either going to get, so they had th three different albums at the Newberry I picked this up at. They had this, The Bottomless Pit, and Year of the Snitch. Um, I decided to go with this because I remember Anthony Fantano um, just gushing about this record. Um, and I think he call, I think he thinks that that's the, the Money Store is the best Death Grips record, and I really like it. I think it's fantastic. I've listened to it quite a lot since I purchased it. I'm really glad to have it in my collection. Now we get into metal. Um, first thing we have here is Cryptic Slaughter's Money Talks. If you don't know who Cryptic Slaughter is, this is a thrash metal crossover. Um, crossover with what though? It, 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 I don't want to call it punk. It's more like a thrash and grindcore crossover. And the reason that I say that is because of the blast beats. Like, they are throughout this entire fucking record. Like, non-stop. And it, it's just amazing. It's politically charged, just like grindcore, like super politically charged. The riff and the the riffs and the aggression just meet that standard of grindcore, in my opinion. Um, and it's just fucking awesome. Um, I absolutely adore this record. I I listened to it. So basically, all the metal records I listened to twice. The day that I recorded this, and the day before um, I recorded this. Um, and it's just awesome. Like every listen, I love Money Talk, so just a little bit more. It's a great record. Um, the production is really nice. Um, they actually let the bass open up a little bit here and there and really breathe. And that's absolutely awesome because there's some pretty good bass work as well as guitar riffs going on in this album. So I'm very happy to have this in my re record collection. Um, it also helps. I, I've already like I've listened to Money Talks before. I found Cryptic Slaughter on YouTube once. I can't remember what I was looking up, but I just found these guys by accident. And like I already knew I was gonna love this album before I bought it, so but now I finally own it. Next is Sepultura's Beneath the Remains. Um, this has got to be probably, honestly, my favorite thing in this pickup video um oh my god the grooves on this fucking album basically if you don't know who sepultura is before i go bust into how much i love this record sepultura started as like a thrash slash death metal 
stand with stuff like morbid visions beneath the remains, schizophrenia, and, sh and arise and whatnot. I would classify them more as thrash because they that's just, you know, how they sound to me. They sound more like a thrash metal band than a death metal band, but people will probably argue about that. Um, but this is one of those records, one of their early records. I believe this is their third record. Um, yeah, because more revisions, then Schizophrenia, then Beneath the Remains, I believe. Um, and it's just a fucking masterpiece. The guitar riffs are just fucking godlike. Like, I've listened to this once again. I've listened to all these albums like twice. Um, well, the, the metal stuff we're getting into now, I've listened to all these metal things twice. And uh, I cannot get any of those Sepultura riffs out of my head. They're just fucking so infectious. They get inside your head and they just stay there like a, an earworm. But I'm so glad that that earworm is there because this fucking riffage is like next level shit, okay? Like this is next level riffage shit. It also helps that like the drums just fucking crush. Like this is some of the best drum work on a thrash metal record in my opinion that I've heard. It's just, once again, it's just I don't know what it is. I, I actually know what it is. It's like more groovy. Like I said, it's it's more groovy. It's not like just, you know, double bass the whole way through. They have some like nice triplets here and there that spice things up and whatnot. It's just some impeccable drum work and the production is actually not that bad either. Um, it's just, once again, it's, a, it, it, it's definitely a classic in my opinion. I mean, I, I just can't hate it. Like, I don't think I could say a negative thing about it. Even, like, Max's voice is so good in this. Like, I've listened to Soulfly, and I'm just not a huge fan of it. I listen to, like, newer Sepultura. Like, I've heard Roots, Bloody Roots, and stuff like that. Um, none, none, of, none of that can even touch these early Sepultura records. This is probably one of the best. Thrash metal albums, just period. It's just so fucking good. Next, we have a punk album, Misfits, Walk Among Us. Um, if you guys remember, um, in my New Hampshire video, I talked about how I was listening to a lot of Misfits um, while I was there, on the car ride there, on the car ride back. Um, I saw Armageddon have, they, they has, had They Walk Among Us, so I was like, I have to pick this up. So I did, and honestly, I'm so glad I did. I almost didn't get it because I couldn't find it. I was like, I asked the guy at Armageddon, I was like, hey, do you guys have, you know, I, I saw on the site you guys have, uh, they walk among us, or walk among us, for three bucks, and I can't find it. And sure enough, he goes down, he bends down and finds it immediately. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I gotta get my eyes checked. But, there are some really great songs on this. Like, I was listening to a lot of, like, like, I was listening to, like, Last Caress and, like, more of their popular songs, um, like Astro Zombies and stuff like that. But honestly, the things that really stick out are, like, The Devil's Whorehouse. I think is that that's what it's called. And, like, fucking um, I Turn Into a Martian, 20 Eyes, Skulls. Really, just listening to it once just got stuck in my head. It's just, like, I love that song so much. Um... The only thing I would say is that the drum pattern is pretty ridiculous, and I, what I mean by that is it's kind of repetitive drum-wise. But other than that, it's still worth listening to because everything else about it is just so great. It's just one of those records that I feel like I can put on whenever, you know, I, I need to chill out a little bit and I want something catchy. Um, this album only runs 24 minutes too, so like if I'm in a hurry, I can just put this record on if I really want to listen to something. So that's awesome. Really, really great record. Very happy I picked it up. Now we get into vinyls, as you can see. Um, I, I can't wait to show this. I actually really like this cover, like a lot. And that's Nuclear Assault Game Over. Fuck yeah. This record. Okay, so, this record is a weird record, because the first time I listened to it, I didn't like it, like, at all. Like, I was like, I can't believe, I don't know if I like this. I mean, I like the drums, I like this, and the guitar is kind of mad, because there isn't enough distortion or whatever, and then the second time listening to it, I don't know what happened, but I just fucking fell in love with it. Like, I just love this record so much now. It's one of those records where, like, I think the first time it kind of underwhelms you, but once you kind of understand what you're getting into, that it's kind of like the top of its class kind of shit. 
Like, I think it's one of those things that you need a second listen to actually, for it to actually set in. And that second listen, I was like, over the moon, like, oh my god, it's just such a fucking amazing thrash metal record. Um, the vocals are, are, are freaking stellar. They're really, really awesome. Some really nice highs and some good screeches and whatnot. Very, very good. The guitar work is impeccable. Um, the solos are fucking awesome in this, like absolutely awesome. The only thing, as I said, I think I think I said, is like the guitars could use a little more like distortion or gain. Um, but other than that, the guitar work is fucking impeccable. The bass really, you know, you know, comes through nice and clear, and you have these drums that just fucking. It just seems like they're pounding so hard. I just really get into it. Like the drums and like the vocals are really the star until the until the solo kicks in. It's just fucking awesome. Um, it also helps that I really like this band because I, I I appreciate this band because they're not afraid to be silly with it. So you have songs like um, Mr. Softy theme song. Mr. Softy theme, which is basically them playing an acoustic version of like an ice cream uh, truck theme song. Then you have Lesbians, which is literally just them screaming lesbians. Um, and I like that they're not afraid to have a little bit of fun. Um, it's a great record, once again, um, absolutely awesome. And they actually gave me a poster, which I would spin around and show you, but I think it'd be a bit of a problem and cause it to defocus and whatnot. I don't want to get open that can of worms. But it's just basically, the co it is just the cover on a poster, and I love it. Um, absolutely, absolutely sick shit. Love it very, very much. So do not fall, please. Okay. And lastly, we have Horrendous's Idol on LP. Um, oh yeah, before I, before I continue. Game Over isn't colored, unfortunately. It is, I believe it was actually this LP, that LP was released by the same people who did Dark Angel, which that album looks, uh, album vinyl looks amazing. It's like blue and black splatter. I used to use it in my, um, my outro, but horrendous as I know. Um, this is actually, I believe this is their Season of Mist debut. Like, this is the first album they dropped with Season of Mist. Um, and it's just fucking awesome. This is another record where, like, I just fell in love with. Um, it's I have to, do have to say I, the first record I listened to by Horrendous was Isidices. I think that's how you say it. Isidices. Yeah, it, 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 it's a. Uh, Give me this one. That's the perks of moving where I am. This one. <laughs> this is the first Horrendous album I ever listened to. Isidices. It's say to see, well, I'm not going to sit here for five hours trying to, to pronounce it, but Idol is just a tick below that. Um, say to see has had like a, a, a good, a good kind of like amount of influence from like regular heavy metal, which is what I really like. Like I got really strong vibes of like Eddie Van Halen or something like Van Halen and shit like that in some of the riffs that they put in, you know, they, that they, um, they put together on that record, um, and it's absolutely great. This is more straight up technical death metal, which I don't hate. I do like tech death quite a lot, but I was a little bit disappointed that they they, they stopped going uh, the route of acidities. I mean, I guess I can't expect them to keep redoing the same stuff and retreading old ground, but it's still a pretty fantastic album. Um, production on this is really really great. Um, one thing I really do like about this production is that the bass is more center stage than like other records. Like, for example, if you listen to Acidices, the guitar is like right up in your face. But with Idol, it takes more of a back seat until it needs to, you know, they open up the guitar for more of, um, for more accents and stuff. Like, it just works really well hearing that fretless bass right up front. Um, the vocals are still stellar. Very, once again, very similar to Acidices. Um, although there's one change that they have some actual clean vocals going on, which work really, really well in busting up this record. Um, and once again, it's just so fucking good. It's it, it's great. Um, drum work is on point. Um, 
although I don't know if I'd say it's anything to write home about. Um, once again, great, great album. I do love it, but I think I still prefer Acidicies. I'm sure most people feel that way as well, but still a great album and worth picking up. While we're talking about Season of Mist, though, <laughs> I always found it annoying, Mini Rants. I always found it annoying with Season of Mist. Um, buying LPs from them because they never include like Bandcamp codes or anything or like posters like you might say Morty you're not entitled to that stuff And I would say you're absolutely right But my problem with buying Season of Mist a lot of the time is that they flat out don't do that ever Like you see my immolation posters there. Uh, that's failures for gods and um, Close to a world below those posters came with my immolation um, records. I have another, I have Dream Death up there, that's Journey into Misery and Nuclear Assault. And I just feel like when it comes to Season of, of Mist, I kind of always am disappointed because there isn't at least once in a while something. But that's not taken away from a horrendous. It's just something I had to say about Season of Mist. I just feel so cheap because, like, they never do anything like that. Like, I've bought so many fucking Season of Mist records. The closest thing they did was dumping a CD on me that they couldn't sell. That was like Sturmgeist's, I can't remember the album, it was one of their fucking albums that they couldn't get rid of, so they packaged it along with my Karaka and Grand Vinyl. That's the closest I ever got from getting something, um, a treat from Season of Mist. Once again, not entitled to it, but just something I wanted to point out. But once again, it seems like everyone, every once in a while, gets something like Armageddon Shop gives you a Bandcamp code, Metal Blade packs posters. I don't know who, who releases Nuclear Assault, but look that up. Uh, oh yeah, HR Records. Both my HR Records came with posters. So it's like nitpicking, but I just want to talk about it. Just just because I'll never get really get the chance to bitch about something so small and minor. It is nitpicking, I will admit, but just something that I kind of wanted to bring up. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, have you listened to any of these records? Please tell me in the comments below, and if you've picked up anything, don't be afraid to leave those in the comments below as well. Mortician, peace out.